Laying out a circuit on a breadboard is great for prototyping, but once the design is finalized, you'll want to move it to a more permanent platform, a PCB. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concepts of making a custom PCB and show you how to make a schematic that will be the foundation for the PCB. This is the first video in a two-part series. In the next video, I'll show you how to design and lay out the PCB using a schematic we'll create in this video. To demonstrate, I'll be making a PCB for an LM386 audio amplifier with bass boost control. I'll be using a service called Easy EDA to manufacture the PCB. We'll be using their free online design tools to create the schematic and PCB files. Let's get started making our schematic then. To get to Easy EDA, open up a web browser and search for Easy EDA. Here it is. Now I've already created an account, but you'll need to register for one if you don't already have it. Once you're logged in, click up here on the New Project button. This will take you to the start screen where you can make a new schematic file or a new PCB file. There's a new schematic file already open, so we can just click on the tab up here. And it'll take you to a blank canvas in the schematic editor. It's very similar to a drawing program. We have some wiring tools over here. This is a preview window for schematic symbols. I'm just going to close it for now. Over here we have some drawing tools. I'll close this for now too. Over here on the left, we have a set of some common schematic symbols. This is the Easy EDA library. In Easy EDA, schematic symbols are organized into libraries. They're symbols for capacitors, resistors, power supplies, transistors, and other commonly used components. There are also libraries of user-created symbols, and I'll show you how to access those in a minute. But first, let's save this project. The project will contain the schematic file and the PCB file. I'll call this project LM386 Audio Amplifier with Bass Boost. That created a folder for the project. Now let's save the schematic. I'll call it LM386 Amp Schematic. You can use this drop down menu to get to your project folders and to get to the schematic libraries. The default schematic library is under Easy EDA Libs. Okay, the first thing you'll want to do is add all of your schematic symbols for your circuit onto the canvas. Since I'll be making an LM386 audio amp, I'm going to need the symbol for an LM386 IC. I can use the filter up here to search for it in the Easy EDA library. Looks like it's not there, so we can search the user created libraries for it. Click down here on More Libraries and try searching here. Here we go. This looks like it's exactly what I'm looking for. This component includes the schematic symbol and the PCB footprint for the LM386. I'll talk more about footprints and packages later on, but for now, let's favorite this so it'll be easier to find later on. Now click on Place and we'll be able to add it to the canvas. You can move this symbol around anywhere, then left click on your mouse to place it. Each left click will place one symbol on the canvas. A right click on the mouse will clear the symbol. I only need one of these, so I'll just delete these other two by clicking on it and pressing delete. Okay, now I need some audio input and output jacks, so let me search for that. Nothing comes up, so I'll try the user libraries. I'm looking for a component that has both the schematic symbol and the PCB footprint. This one looks about right. 
So again, I'm going to add it to my favorites. I could just click the place button to add it, but let me show you how to get to it from the favorites list. Click on the drop down menu up here, then click on favorite parts. And here's the LM386 and the audio jack I just found. I can just double click on the audio jack and I'll be able to add it to the canvas. Once again, left clicking on the mouse sets the location. I need one for the audio input and one for the audio output. You can rotate symbols by pressing the spacebar. Right clicking clears the selected symbol. Next I'll need some potentiometers for the volume, gain, and bass controls. The Easy EDA library has the symbol for potentiometers. I'll put these around here. Now I need a way to get power into the circuit, so I'll need a two pin connector. There's a bunch of different connectors from single pin up to 16 pin. Here's a six pin connector. I just need a two pin connector though. Now I'll put a symbol for ground down at the bottom of the schematic. Most schematics have ground symbols placed towards the bottom of the diagram and VCC symbols placed up at the top. The ground and VCC symbols don't actually create anything on the PCB. They're just there to indicate which part of the circuit is which. Later on we'll connect the VCC side of the circuit to one pin of the power connector and the ground side to the other pin of the power connector. Alright, now I'm going to need a couple of resistors. and some capacitors. Usually schematics are laid out so that the symbols are in the same general area as they're going to be on the PCB. You also want to try to keep the components for the different sections of your circuit close together. This will help your circuit perform better. I'll go more in depth into this in the next video, but for now try to keep the schematic symbols grouped close to the other components they'll be connected to on the PCB. Now I'm going to label all the symbols. This is the audio input. This is the audio output. These are the bass, volume, and gain potentiometers. Now I'm going to label each capacitor and resistor with its value. We just have a bunch of components now, and we still need to make the connections before we can start laying out the PCB. But now is a good time to give the schematic a check to see if the footprints for the components look okay on the PCB. Click up here on Convert Project to PCB, and you'll be able to see how each component is going to look on the board. In the next video I'll go over how to design and lay out your PCB in the PCB editor, but for now let's just take a look at the components here. Each symbol we added in the schematic editor has a footprint associated with it. The footprint defines the physical size and shape of the component as it sits on the PCB. It also defines where the copper pads or through holes will be located. I'm noticing that the footprints for the potentiometers are trim pots. I'll be using the rotary style potentiometers though, so I'll need to change these. And I know that two of my capacitors are radial electrolytic caps, and these footprints are too small for those. These footprints are for ceramic disc capacitors. So now let's change the footprints of these so they'll work with the components I'm planning to use. Let's start with the potentiometers. I'm going to look in the user libraries. A 
The search for potentiometer brings up a list of schematic symbols and footprints. Here are some potentiometer footprints. This one looks like the one I'll be using. There isn't a schematic symbol for this one, but we can just add the footprint to the symbol we already have in the schematic. First, you'll need to add it to your favorites list. Now I'll copy the name of the component. Close this. and click on the schematic symbol you want to add the new footprint to. Now, over here on the right, there's a field for a package. Paste in the new footprint name here. I need all three potentiometers to have the same footprint, so I'm going to change all of them. Okay, now I need to find the footprint for the 1000 microfarad radioelectrolytic capacitor. The default package type is C1. I'm going to go back to the user libraries and search for electrolytic capacitor. So here's one. This is for a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. You don't need to favorite it for this to work. Now I'll copy the name of the part. Click on the symbol in the schematic and paste the name into the package field. All right, there's one more footprint I need to change and that's this 10 microfarad capacitor here. So I found this smaller diameter footprint. I'll favorite it and copy the name. Click on the schematic symbol to select it, then paste the name of the new footprint into the package field. Not really sure why this error comes up, but it shouldn't affect anything. Okay, let's see how the PCB looks now. All right, that's better. The potentiometers have the right footprints, and the two electrolytic capacitors have larger circular footprints. I'll be using ceramic disc and polyester film capacitors for the rest of these, so these footprints will be fine. Alright, now that we have all of our components on the canvas, everything is labeled and has the right footprint, the next step is to start connecting everything. Over here in the wiring tools window, there's a tool for drawing wires. Click on that. When I draw schematics, I usually start at pin 1 of the IC and work my way around until all the components leading to each pin have been connected. It also might help to remove components and wires from your breadboard as you connect them on the schematic, just to track your progress. To draw a wire, hover over the end of the pin until a circle appears. Just left click on the mouse to start the wire. To make another bend after the first one, just left click on the mouse. Bring the wire up to the component it needs to connect to. When you see the circle, it means a connection is made, so left click the mouse again to complete the connection. To turn off the wire drawing tool, right click on the mouse. If components are in the way, just move them out of the way. We'll place them in their final locations after all the wires have been drawn.
After you connect all the wires, you'll probably want to go through the circuit and double check that everything's been connected properly. Once you're sure that everything's okay, we can move the components and wires around to make the schematic look neater and a little bit more compact. Just click on the wire that you want to move and drag the colored circles to where you want to place the wire. Components can be moved by just clicking and dragging them into place. When you're done, save the schematic. Let's see how this looks in the PCB editor. All right, here are all the components ready to go. So in the next video, I'll show you how to design and lay out the PCB. I'll put a link to that video in the description, so check it out when you get a chance. And if you like this tutorial, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.